Welcome back to Games Overboard. I'm Mark. And I'm Olivia. And today we're going to be discussing the game Carcassonne. Uh, we love this game so much we had to get the big box expansion, but for the purposes of this review, we will be discussing just the base game. It was created by Klaus Jurgen Werde, and it's released by Rio Grande Games. It's for people ages 8 and up. It's for 2 to 5 players, and it takes about 45 minutes, although we usually tend to take a little bit less time than that. Um, anyone who likes a combination of strategy and luck is going to like this game, but it's pretty much for everyone. Let's take a look at the pieces, Liv. You're going to get a lot of tiles and a lot of followers. The followers, we call them meeples. Not sure if that's the official word, but that's what we like them as. Uh, let's take a look at the setup here. Uh, what you're going to get is set of meeples per person. You're going to take one of those each and put them on the score tracker here so you can keep score. And then we start with this tile. It does have a different colored back than any of the other tiles. Uh, I personally like to start the game by just spinning it on the table, flipping it over, and that's where you begin. So the size of the surface that you're playing on determines the surface area of your game board. So for instance, if you're playing on a table, the size of the table is how big your game area will be. Uh, there are four different parts to the turn sequence. The first one is to draw a tile. The second one is to place a tile. Now there is something important you need to remember. To place a tile, you have to make sure that all four sides match up. That means a city section has to match up with city, field has to match up with field, and a road has to match up with the road. Also part of Carcassonne that's really great is that during the placement phase, you can try to influence other players' decisions on where they're placing tiles. Don't put that there. I like it there. The third thing that you do is to place a meeple if you choose. Uh, when you place a meeple, uh, placing a meeple on a road, he becomes a thief. Placing him in the city, he becomes a knight. On a cloister, he becomes a monk. And there is one other option, is to place him on a side in a field. That makes him a uh, farmer, uh, and that's something we will discuss further in the end. Also, part of the game is that you can only place your meeple on a feature that doesn't already have another player. The fourth part of the play turn sequence is to score a completed feature. A completed a thief is completed when the road that he's on is uh, finished. Uh, that means it'll end at either an intersection, a city, or a cloister. Each thief gets scored on a road. Uh, you get one point per section of road that goes through a tile. A knight is going to be considered complete when the city he's on is completely surrounded by the walls connect all the way around and there are no spaces in the middle. A knight gets two points per city section that's in the completed city. A monk is scored when the cloister he's on is surrounded on all sides by another tile. So therefore you get nine points per cloister, eight for the surrounding tiles and one for the cloister itself. Uh, farmer is a special consideration. He only gets scored at the end, so we'll discuss that at the end. Uh, now remember, we did say earlier that you could only play a character on an unowned feature. However, there is a way around this. If a there are two separately owned features, road or city, uh, you can place another piece to connect those features, and then the owners of those meeples have to share the points for the feature once it is complete. And if you're really devious, you can make it so that you have more meeples on a combined feature and therefore steal all the points during the scoring phase. Make sure that you don't play your last meeple because uh, you don't want to be left out if there's a great feature that comes along. Every turn, make sure that if you play a meeple, you're going to get one back if it's your last one. Now, to end the game, uh, you basically run out of tiles. Uh, at that point, 
you know, you complete it up and start doing the finished scoring. Uh, to complete, to do the scoring at the end of the game, a thief will get one point for each section of road that he is on. A knight is going to get one point for each unfinished city section. A monk is going to get one point for each tile that the cloister he's on touches. And now we're going to tell you about the farmers. Farmers get three points for each completed city that their farm touches. Uh, there are several expansions, like we said when we got the big box out there. Uh, my personal favorite expansion is the Abbey and the Mayor. And mine is Traders and Builders. Uh, there are some uh, cons to this game. The main one that we think is that the game isn't long enough, which is why we got the big box. Uh, because we like it so much, we want it to take longer. There are also some really good pros to the game. It's quick and easy to learn. You can play with as few as two people, and with some of the expansions, you can play with up to eight or even ten people if you've got enough, uh, uh, if you've got enough game pieces. Um, that's it from GamesOverboard.com. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we are now on Twitter, so you can follow us there. We have a Flickr group that we'd love to see you join, and you can even become our fan on Facebook. So thanks again for joining us at Games Overboard. You have a great day.